What's up, y'all? My name is Devonte, and I sacrificed my time so you don't have to. Can I just say, for the first time in my life, when doing these reviews in general, doesn't matter what review, this episode that you guys pick, I fucking love you. Like I just, I, I love you guys so much with all of my heart. I love you. This episode is forty nine minutes, and I completely forgot Raw used to be an hour back in the days before, like what. I want to say February or March of 1997. I, they turned two hours like a few months later, believe it or not. But I completely forgot because I'm so used to watching Raw during the Attitude Era or God forbid Raw nowadays as far as reviewing the shows whenever I get the opportunity. I completely forgot they were, you know, two hours. Actually, an hour, excuse me. Tongue twisted there for a second. <sighs> or I don't know, mind fucked. I don't know. Someone's fucking my brain right now. I'm fucking stupid right now. But regardless though, this should be a fun episode to sit through. Uh, I mean, for the most part, we all know what we came to watch. We came to watch Brian Pillman Jr. shoot some motherfuckers. Red Dead Redemption style. He got that John Marsh and Malice in his eye. He got that red eye. The problem is, is he going to pull the trigger on old Stone Cold Steve Austin? Because you know Sean, you know Stone Cold Steve Austin likes to say DTA. Can he trust his gun? Because it looks like we're going to get a bit of a DTG. Am I right? Am I right? No one's saying that I'm right. Oh, it's because I'm lonely. I'm the only person around me right now. I'm the only person who can stand me. Okay, that's cool. I see it. I feel it. I understand. Uh, is there anything important about this card that I should probably run down? Um, Really nothing. Again, it's going to be such an easy... It's an hour. It's it's an hour-long show. And again, no commercial breaks because I thought smart. Tapping my head right now. I thought smart. And I got the year plus one. Meaning I get no motherfucking commercials. Where the fuck was this shit at when I was growing up? I would have actually loved to watch the com or not watch the commercials back in the days. Which is, I, you guys forget that by the way. Before I get to the video, like, you know, I, I fucking love how, like, I don't like watching the commercials, like, today. And I didn't like watching commercials when I was a kid, also. And you guys, like, I don't know, call me crazy. Call me, like, wow, Devonta, you really need to get a life. But I like going on YouTube, and I like watching those commercial, um, those, uh, what do you call it? Like, those commercial compilations from, like, specific years. Like, I like to go back, and I like to watch, like, old 1998 commercials or 2001 or 2003 commercials and be like, oh, I remember that commercial! Oh, my God! Like, you know, you go on Cartoon Network or Nickelodeon commercial montages or whatnot. Like, I just got finished watching one from Disney where you had, like, Lizzie McGuire. You had Miranda and, uh, wait, what's the name again? Miranda, right? Miranda and Lizzie. And they're, like, dancing to the fucking, um, what was the name of that song again? Fuck, I can't think of the song. Oh, um, Play. Yes. Do you guys remember Play back in the days? Damn. I'm talking to the, um, you know, people who are, like, you know, 30 and over. Don't worry, Jets. I know you don't know who to fucking play. Actually, you might know who Play is if you, you know, been listening to Diddy lately. But you guys remember that girl group Play? I mean, remember back in the days, all they did was just show girl groups all over. So they were, like, a part of that whole Aaron Carter and, you know, Justin Timberlake when he broke away from NSYNC, the Backstreet Boys, that Christina Aguilera, Mandy Moore, Jessica Simpson era. You know, there is no one else, like, dun, 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 because there is no one else, like, blah, 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 us against the world. They play that shit, like, on Disney Channel, like, all the fucking time back in the early 2000s. All right, I'm rambling on right now. I'll take you guys down Nostalgia Boulevard, left turn, Brian Pillman with a gun. Are you guys ready? Because I'm ready. Sorry for boring you guys who are younger with the nostalgia stories. When you get to be my age, you'll start doing the same exact thing also. Unless you're doing it right now. You know, you got kids nowadays who are like 19 years old pretending that they're old people. Now, oh, back in my days in the late 2010s, we used to have cell phones that you could tap on to that we call smartphones. Nowadays, these kids have their little virtual helmets on and they can't even see where they're going walking across the street. Shut your ass up. Okay, no more talking. Let's go. Oh, no. Oh, no, no, they will not get away with that today, bro. I haven't seen this segment in years. I forgot how it's set up. You know, I always remembered Pillman holding the gun. I never remembered him actually cocking this shit back on live TV. What the actual fuck, dude? Bro, there are rap videos that wouldn't get away with this shit today on fucking line, let alone on national TV. This motherfucker pulled out a gun. He said, when Austin meets Pillman, 9mm, I'm going to blow his ass straight to hell. Bro, I have no... I swear to God, I remember the gun. I do not remember him cocking the shit back. That's fucking insane. What the actual 
fuck? But you know what? You know what? Truth be told, you know, I joke all the time about AEW and their structure as far as how they're getting across some of their storylines, some of their characters, what they need to do in order to put themselves in the limelight. You know, unfortunately, the story that they're currently doing at the moment, they're overshadowing because of Tony Khan's stupidity. But I'm just saying, if they were to do something along the lines of this, this is the kind of stuff that I'm talking about as far as what would actually stick out if they actually went out of the way to perform. Now, obviously, you don't want to go to the extreme of pulling out a fucking gun on live TV and cocking the shit back. What the actual fuck? But at the same time, if he did something a little bit, you know, less extreme than that, you know, I'm, I'm just saying, you know, you could probably have like a, sh a like a shotgun barrel on the wall. You know, remember Moist Critical when he was talking about Sneeko last year and he took out the gun and he was like disassembling it in real time. You know, he could do that. You know, I, I wouldn't see a problem with that. He's like disassembling. You fucking idiot. This is a muzzle or a fucking magazine or whatever the fuck he said. I don't see a problem with doing something along the lines of that. I thought Moist Critical handled it pretty good he never got in trouble by community guidelines right i thought charlie is a perfect example of how you actually do what brian pillman did without going full insano style like fucking brian pillman just did just now that's exactly what you want to do in order to get your characters over again not that that's insane but i mean actually doing something along the lines of that carrying that into something that you know can build up on an actual feud or storyline and then making good on that feud or storyline you know what i mean that right there right there believe it or not that right there got WWE out of the 1.0 range, got them out of the one range. You know, they were still getting their asses murdered by WCW, and that actually wasn't going to stop for another year and a half by that point. But at the same time, though, by this point in October, November, late September, they would they were getting like annihilated. Like like there was a bigger disparity in the ratings. Honestly, the disparity in the ratings is very akin to how you see Dynamite versus SmackDown nowadays probably even more further that's how badly they were getting their asses were i think i remember them having like a 1.6 or a 1.7 in the ratings which you say to yourself oh wow that's actually a pretty good number by today's standards that's raw's number you know what wcw was getting at this time threes i think even fours at this point coming up at the very least that's a bigger disparity than what you see today with fucking dynamite and smackdown that's how badly WWE was getting their asses well at this time. And then this gun shit got so much buzz around them, they kind of broke that momentum. Again, they were still getting their asses what pretty fucking badly. Probably, you know, they closed the gap a little tiny bit, but it was still pretty fucking bad at that point going throughout 1997. But it was shit like this that broke that momentum. And you know what I'll say also? You know what I'll say also? I like the fact that, yes... You're showing Goldust versus Barry Windham. They called him the stalker back then. And no one gave a shit about this match, right? What we cared about was the angle between Stone Cold Steve Austin and really Bret Hart, but Brian Pillman kind of being a stand-in for Bret Hart. That's what we cared about. That's what we wanted to see. That's what I mean about putting the focus on your main talent and then giving that a linear story throughout the night. You know, if you did more of that, and I, look, this could go to WWE, this could go to AEW, whoever wants to take this advice, you'd be a little bit less more, you know, what's the word I'm looking for? that's right interesting a little bit more interesting and they went throughout the and then look i got nostalgic about certain things i was watching like the karate fighters and shit like that i had one of those things back in 2000 or like uh for an example watching them show the undertaker and you know paul bear in a dummy version locked inside a cage upside down as a promotion for the summer for the survivor series stuff uh, 96 Survivor Series is coming up or uh, for an example you had Stone Cold Steve Austin walking through the alley with his promo his infamous I don't dance son I'm not a sexy boy great promo by the way by Austin I'm just saying all that was good aesthetically but that's you know reacting to this as nostalgia in real time what people were seeing at that time with Brian Pillman in the gun and shit that's what you need nowadays in order people i remember someone asked me this what does aew need to do in order to kind of like break this momentum as far as getting so many l's shit like that again not exactly like that but shit like that you get what i'm saying but uh, let's continue on with the show i'm probably not this video ain't gonna be that long again because it's only 49 fucking minutes but you know again i this is good shit man i wish wrestling was like this more often fuck Bro, that's just there's just no way. There's there's no way in possible hell they get away with this thing. There's there is there's there's no way. There's no you know what I'll actually say? They cut the black screen when Pillman pulled the gun out and you know Austin breaks through the window and he opens the door because that's breaking and entering. And logically, I don't know how because where is Brian from? Cincinnati, I think. I think he's from Ohio, right? What is what is Ohio's statues when it comes to the Castle Darchin? Because personally, me. 
I'm standing next to that door, and as soon as Austin punches his hand through that window, I'm blasting his ass. You see that little stone coat, that little skull logo he has? Well, that logo is going to be based off of his body when I'm done emptying his clip on his ass. If he was to actually punch his, wind, punch his hand through my window. And he beats the shit out of his friends outside in the lawn too. Two couple of obvious little jobbers beat the shit out of him. One guy he attempted murder on by trying to drown him in the pool. Another guy he sticks his head in the door and he starts slamming the door in his head and trying to fucking murder him. Then he gets like a bike and he just throws it at the guy, shoots out at the at his face. It's just this is fucking insane. Fucking this is bro. How did they get away with this shit? I just don't know. I'm actually surprised as soon as like Pillman pulled the gun out at first when he has the whole Pillman 9mm. I'm actually surprised because I can't help but think. If they pull that shit today, USA Network would not only cancel Raw right then and there, I think they would have probably went completely, like, off screen. They would have probably, like, cut the show off. They would have probably aired some reruns of Law & Order right then and there in its spot. I got a film they would have done that today. Now, granted, obviously, uh, there's got to be some kind of clause in their contract that probably prevents them from doing shit like that nowadays. There's, 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 bro, every sponsor would run up the nearest hill if they seen some shit like that. That's fucking crazy. And you know the scary part about it is, too? When the show first came on, now, mind you, this is retrospectively. So we're talking about like something that they could have put a label on based off of today's guidelines, right? You would think automatically you're showing a gun on live TV being cocked. You would think that logic would probably say that this is definitely. If not TV 14, maybe even TV MA, just because of the graphic nature of what they're implying of what could happen, you would think that it would have gotten that uh that uh what you call it that um rating, but no, no, it didn't. It it got a PG rating. Because, you know, why? Why why? Just just why? Why? And you know, and other things though I do want to talk about outside of the Brian Pillman stuff, because we're gonna talk about that more as the show goes on. Uh, we got a legendary fight and a legendary debut. Well, it wasn't a debut. I think he actually wrestled a couple of weeks prior to this. Now, it was like, the Sultan versus um, the legend known as the Pug. I can't remember his last name, so I'm just going to call him the Pug. It's like Mike the Pug something. It's some fucking long-ass Italian last name that I don't give a shit about. And people may be saying to themselves, Oh, legendary? The Sultan? Oh, you mean Rikishi, Devontae, huh? Right? No, you fucking succubus. No, I mean the Pug. Mike the Pug is the legend. Okay, me. Oh, Devante, he got squashed in the match. Who the fuck is the Pug? No one remembers the Pug. Your mom remembers the Pug from last night when she was in bed with him. You know what could have happened? Honestly, going throughout the attitude, I said they fucked over my nigga the Pug. But you know what could have happened? They could have taken L, and then they could have turned that L, and then put it directly in the P and the U, and you could have made him Mike the Pug. Mike the plug, bro. That could have been his whole gimmick. He goes around, yo, bro. Yo, man, I got that sticky Reggie, bro. You know, I got that shit that make you not wake up till tomorrow, bro. What's good? That that that, that could have been his entire gimmick, bro. Instead, you know, his legendary, legendary, legendariness. It kind of wore off a little bit. You know, the Sultan Rikishi, he ended up putting him in the camel clutch. Which, by the way, what the fuck is with them taking Samoans and giving them different ethnicities, right? Whether it's them pretending to be black, them being Japanese like Yokozuna, or Rikishi pretending to be Middle Eastern. What the fuck is with them taking Samoans and giving them different ethnicities, right? Huh. But regardless, though, yeah, the plug definitely could have worked. Could have been a legend in the making. People are like, Devonta, you're bullshitting. You're crazy as fuck. No, I'm not crazy. I'm a dreamer. Have you ever seen her? No, I'm joking. No, but see, real, talk, real talk, though. This is a good show so far. I'm liking what I'm seeing. Not the jobber nonsense outside of Mike the Plug, but, you know, Stone Coast Steve Austin destroying jobbers and uh, nearly getting attempted murder from Brian Pillman. Um, good show so far. Loving it. Loving it. What an easy sit through. We're almost done with the show already. I need y'all to do more review. I need to, I need to actually give you guys more choices watching more of these type of shows because this shit is so fucking easy to sit through, bro. Oh my God, man. So we had a little bit of a, a segment with Shawn Michaels and uh, Sid Vicious or Psycho Sid, however you like to refer to him, Sid Justice, whatever, guy with scissors. I don't know what the fuck you want to call him, but they're like going back and forth in this like little, um, it's like a contract signing, but it's not a contract signing. They both have like podiums and like talking to each other like it's a fucking debate or something. And bro, Sid is just retarded. I don't know what to tell you. Sid is just, 
he's a retard bro his promos are just so incoherent and fucking stupid i don't know what to say but they're at the same time his aggression is so awesome you can look over it even though the words that he's saying are just outright retarded so sean michaels is talking to him and he's like you know it was me who brought Sid Vicious back. I brought him from a loony van and, you know, I gave him a place in WWE to be brought back because they're like highlighting video packages from a year and a half prior to that around uh, WrestleMania 11 time when Sid Vicious gave Shawn Michaels like a shit ton of power bombs. That's actually terrible. That's actually what turned Shawn Michaels face. I was like right after WrestleMania 11, if I remember correctly. Actually, probably the night after, if I'm not mistaken. But, um,. Uh, that's what Shawn Michaels is like. Oh, I brought you back to the WWE from the Looney Van. And then Sid Vicious, oh God. This is what the caption said. Because I can barely understand what the fuck this man is saying. I, sh I shit you not. The caption said, this is what Peacock said. He's cutting a promo and he's like, You didn't bring me from the Looney Van. You couldn't beat me. I'll beat my own ass. I'm like, this, Did the caption? I had to rewind it again. Because then he was like, Because he says, so He's like, That's bullshit and it's sensitive right but this man actually did legit say that that's what the caption says said you didn't take me from the loony then that's bullshit you're gonna beat my ass i'll beat my own ass and i'm like yeah he really did just say that okay 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 that's that's cool he's so vicious he can get away with it i don't i this man <laughs> I, I'm like Lex Luger. I don't know. I, I don't know, bro. Regardless, though, they're like talking. And then he says something else that was crazy. I'm like, we need more people like Psycho said, bro. I'm sorry. We need more people cutting promos like Psycho said. He's the fucking man, bro. Him and Ahmed Johnson. Just, they don't, they, they're so bad, but they're so good at the same time. Shawn Michaels responded with something on the lines of, hey, look, I'm not saying that you don't have the ability to beat me. I'm just saying you're not in my league, pal. And Sid Vicious responded with, little league, little man. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, Psycho Sid rules. And this man says, little league, little man. I'm the man. I'm like, yeah, you the man, Sid. Hell yeah, you the man. <laughs> Sid fucking rules. He's the ruler of the world. <sighs> By the way, that was a real catchphrase from I shit you not. His real catchphrase was, I am Sid and I am the ruler of the world. We need more wrestlers like Sid Vicious. I don't give a fuck what no one says. People, oh, Devontae, he sucks at his promos. No, you suck at promos. Your favorite wrestler sucks at promos. If you ain't cutting promos like Sid Vicious, you ain't cutting promos, period. Period. And then afterwards, Jim Cornette brought his Kim Cornette goons out there. Vader, Owen Hart, British Bulldog. Damn, that's sad. All of them are dead, too. God damn, that's sad. I know Jim Cornette's feeling that a little tiny bit. But regardless, so they all come in the ring. They tried to get the one up on Sid Vicious and Shawn Michaels. Uh, they, I didn't even know they were doing the garbage fucking uh, can they coexist storylines back then, too. I mean, you got to they had a tag team uh, the following week. They're going to have a tag team championship match against the Kemp Cornette guys. Owen Hart and British Bulldog. I presume, obviously, Shawn and Sid didn't win because, well, Owen and I think Owen and um, uh, Davey Boy, I think they defended. Excuse me. I mean, unless they lost it again and then regained it. I mean, I know Sean and Sid didn't win it because they didn't have the belts going into Survivor Series. But I mean, like, I wonder if they... Because they had the belts all the way up to, like, WrestleMania... I think they had it up until, like, did, did uh, Austin and um Michaels beat them for the Tag Team Championship belts? Did they have the belts for that long? Probably not. I don't know. I can't remember, though. But regardless, Owen Hart came in the ring with a chair, and then he hit Psycho Sid with the chair, uh, and then Shawn Michaels chased him off, and then he picked up the chair to swing it at Owen, which obviously means Psycho Sid turned around, and he sees the chair in Shawn Michaels' hand. He's like, did you hit me? I mean, Shawn Michaels he was like, no, that was Owen. That was Owen. But I mean, Psycho Sid is such a retard. I think he still would have hit Shawn Michaels had they not broken up anything. It's, 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 it's just even more funnier because Psycho Sid is like, you ain't a smart man, little man. I'm like, yes, yeah, Sid, he's not a smart man. And he's absolutely a little man. Damn right, Sid. 
Ah, man, I'm telling you, we need more promos like that. We need more testosterone-driven retardation like that. But with that being said, we're coming back to Raw. They're coming back with the signal with Brian Pillman and Stone Cold Steve Austin. So let's get back to that, shall we? And they closed it with Brian Pillman trying to kill Austin still. And, bro, there's just no way. There's just no way. I, I don't buy this. There's just no way. You got, so you had this boring ass match with, by the way, can I talk about this for a second before I talk about the main event? You, I forgot they did this lame ass, embarrassing. This is just embarrassing. Why would you do this? It's beyond me. There's multiple things and I'm looking at the segments tonight and I'm thinking to myself, why would you do this? Just one happens to be insanely fucking awesome and the other thing happens, happens to be insanely fucking cringe and just horrible. I I completely forgot about the whole stupid fucking fake Razor Ramon and fake Diesel shit. Uh, actually, I think fake Razor Ramon, is, I think he passed away. I think Jericho talked about him on his podcast a couple of years ago and stated that he passed away. But uh, fake Diesel, obviously, that's Kane. So <laughs> he's not dead. Thank God. Uh, he's 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 one of the greatest mayors in America currently at the moment is Kane, Glenn Jacobs. But I forgot they did this dumbass gimmick. And you had triple h a young triple h and i seen the young rocky Maivia earlier tonight one of his first instances of being on television by the way how fucking crazy is it looking at triple h right here and then looking at the rock and seeing them in their positions currently at the moment and just thinking to yourself like wow it's just crazy just think about this two years later if you really want to be well for the rock it was two years later which is crazy in its own right but think about this i want you to put this into context where are we right now? What's today's date right now? It is April 28th and it's 2024, right? So three years ago was April 28th, obviously 2021. Around this time, this is when Bianca Belair just won the world championship, her women's championship match from Sasha Banks, right? This is around the time where you had Roman Reigns still reigning supreme. He beat Edge, he beat Brian Danielson uh, in the triple threat match, right? Drew McIntyre was fighting Bobby Lashley. And you look at all these things, with the exception of Edge and Danielson going into AEW, you look at all the superstars, more importantly, you look at the production and you look at the environment, honest to God, nothing feel like it's changed at all. 2021 feels like exactly how 2024 feels. It, I feel there is literally no difference at all between 2021 and 2024. It feels like it was one fluid year. You can't tell me anything that has changed between 2021 and 2024 besides superstars going between both AEW and WWE. Besides that, production-wise, storyline-wise, all the stuff regarding it, nothing has changed at all. At all. All the way to the point that I was reviewing shows back then, too. And I had my Millennial Smart channel all the way. Can you, you listen to my Millennial Smart sh um, reviews and uh, contemporary commentary videos wherever in 2021? You really couldn't tell me there's any much of a difference between then and what I'm doing right now. Maybe I'm a little bit softer compared to where I was back in those days. But other than that, exactly the same. You look at this right here and just think about this. Three years after this is November of. Oh, you know what? Perfect. I could bring this in. I could bring this perfectly into context for you guys. Three years later was my Armageddon review. Yeah. Yeah. Put that into context. You have Rocky Maivia right there. Triple H is Hunter Hearst Helmsley, right? Three years later was my Armageddon review. Go watch it to get better context. It is like a complete. It's it's a it's not even the same companies anymore. They're not the same companies. The superstars, as far as the main event scene, are completely, it's its radical. It's its radicalized to the degree. Their whole roster is radicalized. It's fucking insane to see how much of a change. The scenery, the, the ambiance, the environment, the production, the wrestlers, and the main event scene, the mid-car scene. It, it's, it's insane to see how, and it, it, it's, it's just crazy to see the growth like the, the kind of I'll put it to you this way. They did more of a growth between 1996 to 1999 than probably in the last 15 years today. Today, there was more growth in three years at that time than, say, 2010 to now. Way more growth. Maybe even 2009. Way, way, way more growth. It's fucking crazy. It's fucking crazy how much balls they had back in the days to take those kind of leaps of faith to just have a complete stark contrast from where their company was back in 1986 to where they were in 1999. It's just fucking crazy. But back to the Brian Pillman and Stone Cold Steve Austin stuff. Brian Pillman is like 
trying to get through the crowd of people who are right there. They're holding him back. He has a gun in his hand and Austin is right there. And Pillman is like, let me at him. Let me at him. And Austin is trying to break through the crowd. He's like, shoot me, shoot me. And Brian Pillman said, let me at him. I'm going to fucking kill him. He actually said that live. You can hear him say that. I'm going to kill him. I'm going to kill him. Where the fuck is he at? He's, he said it clear as fucking day. Just drop the F-bomb like it was nothing. That probably is what got him in trouble, too, to be honest with you. People talk about the gun stuff. Obviously, that was the number one thing, most likely. But them just, I mean, if I heard the fuck right here on live television, right here, 28 years later, I can only imagine that they heard the word fuck on live television on USA Network back then. Again, it's just crazy. They're on USA right now. There's just no way USA Network, they'd be canceled. There's there's no way they would be canceled from the F-bomb, from the gun, from the violence, from what they were portraying themselves on television as. See, Stone Cold Steve Austin was the first and the few to actually bring this attitude, no pun intended, with the cursing and the swearing. Austin was really the first one. He was blurring the lines very, very much. See, people take people say, oh, well, don't you remember the Ultimate Warrior where he, where, uh, he dropped the F-bomb, you know, for gay people the slur can't say it because i want to get in trouble by youtube which you know i'm trying to say yes he dropped that on television straight up uh jerry the king lawler did it also in the king of the ring in 97 in his interview um but the thing is during that time we didn't really care for words like that we didn't really know that you know they had such a horrible uh a horrible thing as far as how it connects to the other people who are offended by it we just didn't know and quite frankly we didn't care about then and honestly i wish we still had that attitude today where it shouldn't hurt you and if they do that's your problem is how i look at it but austin was the first one to use words that are bad today and were bad back in the days and he blurred the line very very much but they completely overstepped the line right here with the gun and the swearing and the cursing Swearing and cursing is the same thing. You don't try to say though. It, it was just it, it was crazy. It was crazy. Like I said, if AEW ever wants to stand a chance to get legitimately over without having to rely on the bullshit wrestling or having to rely on what what I'm, I'm not saying this. I'll still wait till Wednesday. But what people perceive as you know cringy storylines, they're gonna have to do something maybe a step below what we've seen right here. That's what's gonna get people's attention at the very least. You know how much this shit will go viral to if if Brian if social media existed in 1996, do you know how much this shit would have went viral, bruh? Probably would have went viral to the point that USA Network probably wouldn't have done anything. Nah, they would have done something. Let me stop bullshitting. Yeah, they would. <laughs> nah, but you bruh, even rap videos at the time weren't doing shit like this. Like I said, they weren't bruh, it's it's pure insanity. It's pure insanity that, that they got away with this shit. But like I said, it broke the momentum a little bit from them being completely dogged out by WCW. After this point, this is when they started to build up a little bit momentum for themselves. Like I said, they were still getting their asses whooped, but they weren't getting like demolished. Like if this was a football game prior to this, it was more like six to 56 type of shit. Whereas after the show, it was more so like 30 to 56, right? They're still being dogged out but they're not like completely blown out you know what i'm trying to say they're starting to catch up little by little little by little it didn't really come into fruition as far as uh, their prediction and their plot and their plan as far as when they started to really really catch up until like almost a full year later with mike tyson after the royal rumble that's when shit really got to start cooking with wwe right here nah they ain't nowhere near wcw's territory yeah wcw has yet to even meet the pinnacle of what the nwo brought to the table not to mention wwe was still doing really although this show i thought was really fun and i love the shit with michaels and sid i love the shit as far as the build up for survivor series i love the shit M mankind cut a promo on the show oh no he didn't that was actually a pre uh, promo package but you get what i'm trying to say though actually you don't get what i'm trying to say because it had absolutely nothing to do with what i was saying my point being is though the show in itself although it had a bunch of cool stuff and the focus was on a bunch of cool stuff it was still a bunch of cringe the wrestling matches tonight were absolutely fucking garbaggio no one gave a shit about the survivor series as far as the matches the traditional survivor series matches no one gave a shit about that it's that's what i'm saying it's just crazy to me to see how low on the total post someone like a triple h happens to be just to see where he's at right now 28 years later it's fucking it's fucking insane but it's really cool to look at at the same time though and it's more so cool to see where they were at let alone three years ago we're talking about just a year later where they were at around this time fucking crazy but let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below how you felt about this review i again i thought it was a i think it's because it was an hour the hour really did help out a lot it cut out a 
bunch of filler. So you were kind of forced to focus on the main stuff being Austin and Pillman or Shawn Michaels and Psycho Sid. Imagine if they had an hour today. Raw, I, I Look, let me tell you this. If they had an hour today for either Raw or SmackDown, I think the wrestling business would be in so much better shape. I think, honestly, wrestling would hit a new era if they had an hour to focus on today. Maybe even two hours for Raw, but in particular, an hour? Oh, man, so much shit would be getting over. It's like, man, it's not as if they haven't done this before on NXT, but yeah, they get over so much shit if they had an hour program to work with today so much better so so much better if they had an hour to work with but let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below as always my name is Devonte, and i'll be catching you guys later deuces p eyes